In this lab, we will learn how to use one-time pad cipher to encrypt a text file and an image here. Get familiar with the source code for one-time pad cipher. Complete the following tasks. You can see uh, the rubrics, 8%, 40%, 40%, 40%. And you, the first one, use Linux commands for and Python to read and write text files in binary mode. The second task, use Linux commands in Python to demonstrate encryption decryption on the text file here. You can right click, open this text file. This text file is a, is a general monogamy DD days speech. Here you can see his DD day speech. Just to inspire the soldiers. For the Normandy landing. Here the second task, the, the last one, use Linux commands and Python to demonstrate encryption and decryption of all in the date part of this image file. The image it contains two parts, a header and a data part. The data part is the image itself. That header usually we call it uh, metadata. The metadata will describe the information of this image. For example, uh, the height and width, uh, the depth of each pixel, and so on. Encrypt and decrypt this image with one-time pad cipher in both module addition and bit XOR algorithm. You learn the uh, one-time pad cipher with both algorithms last week. You can uh, increase, decrease any image, but before that, we need to convert the image from any other format into 24-bit BMP image, because this uh, BMP image is easier to process. You can use a convert command. Import with any image you download from internet for this image. Provide the option type is true color. True color is 24 bit BMP. Here this is the output image, image.bmp. And this image, it contains 40, uh, 54 bytes header. You can extract its header with this uh, command line. And you can also extract the data part of this image with uh, this command line. And save the header into a file called header. And it's a image data part, just called a data. After you encrypt this uh, data part, you can concat the header and the new data together to get a new image. Here the report, the twelve percent for the real questions. There are three questions. How to generate the key truly randomly in one time pad cipher? Question two, how to make sure the one-time pad key is used only once? The last uh, question, suppose sender and re receiver locate away from each other. How could they share the key securely before their confidential communication? Confidential communication, which means their communication are uh, encrypted. Encrypts communication with one-time pad cipher after they share the same secret key. Since they share the same secret key, they both know the keys. So if one, for example, if the sender send an encrypted message to the receiver, then the receiver can decrypt the secret with the same key because they shared the same secret key before their confidential communication. In all my lectures and labs, there are lots of references. You can check these uh, references to learn more. And here you can see uh, for each algorithm, 20%. We can this 40%, for each algorithm is uh, 20%. These are the rubrics. The code is uh, provided. You can see the code here. And the data here, right click, open your new tab. Here is the code. Use the
the function provided in this uh, Python file, one time pad funds. There are four functions or two, group, two groups. The first two are the implementation of the modular algorithm, the encrypt, decrypt, mod B, mod B, which means encrypt, decrypt with the modular algorithm. The second group of two functions, the encrypt X, X or B, and uh, it decrypt X or B. The second group implement the algorithm uh, with uh, XOR or XOR. So you only need these uh, four functions in IPython to encrypt and decrypt. The image provided here and the text file here. So first you need to download the code and the, all the data in your seat virtual machine. In your seed virtual machine, always create a folder to contain all the lab materials. Today is uh, lab 03. Now inside lab 03, copy the data, the image, the text file, and that code. I downloaded all the code and the data inside into this uh, folder. So you can always download and put them at the same place. Because I use a git clone, so I can always use a git pull to update the download. Here you can see the updates. Now I come to the labs, lab 03, and the code is here. So the copy the code and paste into that folder I just created. Right click this document, open a new tab. Here you come, place documents, lab 03, paste here. So the code is placed here. Go back to that code folder, click lab 03, come to this uh, data, copy these two files. Paste into uh, lab 03, this folder we created uh, just a moment ago. Now you have all the code and all the data files. Then we can continue our lab. Task one, use the Linux command and Python to read write text files in binary mode. So here we open a terminal window. I would like to use this uh, terminator. So how do I get its location? Here, click this uh, empty part on your keyboard, press Control L, then you can right click, copy this uh, folder path. Come to this terminator, type CD, means change directory or change folder, paste here. Now you see you are inside this uh, lab 03 folder. Type ls means list all the files and the contents under the current folder. You can see the image, a text file, and the code. Now you can run ipython3. For those students, if your ipython3 is not installed, it will tell you how to install ipython3. If you type ipython3, it says, Please install it with a sudo apt install ipython3, then you can install it. All right, first uh, I would like to use Python to read and write files in binary mode. First, I would like to uh, create a file. Create a file, we can use a write function to return. Uh, well, first, we, we, want, we need to open a file. So. Let's uh, create a F1, this is the first file. Open is a function used to open file for read and write. 
So we can quite adjust uh, the first file. First, you can use any uh, extension. Here, let's just use the extension, extension uh, bin, means uh, binary. In Linux, the extension is not like Windows. You can use uh, any extension to represent any types of files. Now, the first one we want to uh, write, right? We use a W. If the file is not there, it will create one for us. Make sure you use a quote to quote the file name and the right fl flag. Now, F1 is open. Then I want to write some data into this file. How do we create some binary data? Binary data, we use a binary string. So D1 means the data one. X binary string is prefixed with a B, look as B, enclose them with a question, uh, with a quotation. Now inside you can uh, type your normal uh, text. This is uh, lab zero, three, task one. So just uh, one sentence. This is not a normal string because we prefixed with a B, means it's a binary string. Press enter, we create a D1. Then we want to write this D1 into uh, this F1. So F1 is a file descriptor. It handles, it's just like a handle used to process this first dot bin file. When you go to your folder, you will see first dot bin is created. First dot bin is created after we just uh, open it with this uh, line or Python code. Now we want to write this sen sentence D1, this is data, this is binary data, write into file one, press enter. Uh, must be string uh, not uh, bad. The problem is when I open that file, actually I didn't uh, open it as a binary mode. So we need to uh, do it again. Before that, I would like to close this file. Everyone close. So now you see it says uh, it's string because of when we open it, we didn't specify uh, we must uh, write and read in binary mode. So go back to your folder, delete this uh, first dot bin. Actually, you can also use command line here, remove first dot bin. Then it's removed. Here you see uh, that first dot bin is gone. Okay, now uh, let's uh, open a file again. You can use the arrow key to bring up those commands. Now this time, remember to add a B, means do it in binary mode. Okay, now it's uh, opened and created. You can check it here, it's created again. And that D1 is already created, so I don't need to uh, do it again. So I only need to repeat this uh, right, F1 dot write D1. F1 dot write D1, press enter. Now you see uh, 21 bytes are written into that file. Since it's uh, written, then I can uh, close it again. Here for F1 dot close. Okay, the write is uh, successful. You can come here to check his contents. You right click, open with uh, other application. We have all application, for example, we want to open it with uh, Sublime Text Editor. So we open it with the Sublime Text Editor, select. And you can see the content is here. This is a lab 03 uh, task one. All right, now uh, this is uh, right. How do I read the contents? If we want to read it, we need to uh, open it again. 
So we still equate f1 equals open, given the file name first dot bin. And this time we want to write, or we want to read out as a binary data. So f1 equals open first dot bin, read binary. Then we want to uh, read it out. Let's uh, put it inside a variable. Put the contents inside of the variable all one f1 dot read. Then you can uh, show all one. You see all one is the binary data. This is lab 03 task one. And you can compare all one equals d1 is show, right? So we read the content out successfully. Every time after you read it right, please remember, close the file. So I close, f one dot close, close the file. So this is uh, task one, task one is done. Now for task two, encrypt, decrypt the DDD speech with this uh, one-time pad cipher in both module addition and bit XOR algorithm. So first we want to, we need to import the code. Import one time pad funds. Press enter now. The module is imported. You can check it, one time pad funds. Press your tab key, you will see some auto completion show up. Then you press a dot, press your tab key. You can see the four functions show up here. Decrypt mod B, decrypt X or B, encrypt mod B, encrypt X or B. So first of all, let's try out the modular addition algorithm. So before that, we need to uh, read the DDD speech text file into a binary data variable. So we can do it uh, like this. Let's create a DDD speech. Just create a DDD, right? First, we, we, we want to open the file. So let's use a f today. f today equals open, then follow the file name. The file name is a general Montgomery DDD speech. Then we want to do it as a binary data. So use RB as a flag. Okay, now the file handle is opened, saved in FD day. Now we want to read the data, right? So we can use uh, all means read the data, all D day. Equals FD day dot read. So all the contents is, uh, all the file is uh, read into this variable, all D day. Actually, you can type all the day to have a look. So you can see uh, the contents and there are some uh, binary numbers because these uh, is read as a binary string as we discussed in the lecture. This uh, binary number, they may write some uh, special symbols then those symbols are not printable. And uh, if uh, that binary uh, byte is a uh, Printable, for example, it corresponds to a letter, then it will show up as a letter. Okay, these are contents. Now we want to encrypt the contents. So we can call the encryption data with uh, prefix E D day. We want to try the first uh, modular algorithm. So we EM D day. Please uh, name your available, consistent, and uh, readable. So then you can use a long name. She, this short short name uh, is uh, quite easy uh, to confuse. 
So one time head. One time pair funds dot encrypt mod B. But before we encrypt this uh, text file, we need to create a key. And that key needs to have, have, have the same length as the uh, data, right? So we need to create a key first. So let's uh, create a key one for the text file. And the key need to have the same length as the data. So we need to find the length of the data. The data is a RD data. So you can see its length. Its length is 2,665 bytes. So we know its length. We also need a module called OS, import OS. And OS has a function called URandom. random is used to generate a pseudo random number. So this is not true, truly one time pad cipher. For this lab, it's okay you use a pseudo random, num pseudo random number generator to generate the key. In the real world, we need a uh, mechanism to generate truly random uh, keys. Now we can use this uh, OS module to generate a key, uh, key one, because OS dot u random, u random is the function to use to, to use to generate the pseudo random number. So we put the length, the length 2665, Okay, now we have a key. Then we can uh, in, encrypt the data. EMDDA means the encrypted data. One time pad funds dot encrypt uh, mod B. For this function, it's a first parameter. This is a plain text. The second parameter is the key. So the first parameter is the data. The data is hard DDA. And the key is this key one. So now it's a encrypted, which means this EM DDA contains the encrypted message and it's, a, it's not readable. You can show it. ED day, here you can see uh, it's lots of binary number. It's totally unreadable. Now we have the encrypted message. How do we decrypt? So to decrypt, we use a variable called name, let's say D, D day, D, let, Let's just uh, use it to represent the decryption. Equals uh, one time pad funds. Now this time we call decrypt mod B. And this decrypt mod B, the first parameter is a cipher text, the encrypted message. The second, second parameter is key. So we put here that uh, encrypted message is E. Is EM DDA, right? This is a encrypted message, and uh, because it's a symmetric cipher, so we need the same key, key one. So now we get the decrypted message. How do we know it's right or not? You can show its contents or just compare it with the original message. Did it there? Was it equal the original message or did they? And you see it's true. So your de decryption is successful. DDA. Uh, we can show it uh, this DDA. Show its contents. Here you can see uh, some lots of readable stuff and with some uh, hex number.
is exactly the message to be encrypted. So we decrypt this uh, secret successfully. So we com complete the first uh, part, encrypt, decrypt with one time pad cipher in modular addition. Now for this uh, bit XOR algorithm, the whole procedure is exactly the same. So you only need to change the name with this uh, X or B for encryption, encrypt uh, X or B for encryption. The parameter you can see the exact same, decrypt X or B, the parameter exactly the same. So you, you must uh, generate another key for this uh, X or B algorithm encryption decryption. Because for one time pad cipher, use your key only once. That's why for the second time, you want to do an encryption decryption, even on the same message, we still need a new key. So you need to generate a new key. So this is for the second part, since the procedure is exactly the same as the first algorithm, so you can do it by yourself. I will not demonstrate this part. Okay, for the last task, again, I will demonstrate with one algorithm, the other algorithm you will do it by yourself. And this time, I will demonstrate with this bit XOR algorithm. So you need to complete that uh, modular addition algorithm for this one. Here, modular addition algorithm 20%, beta XOR algorithm 20%. First, we need to uh, convert the image into a bit 20, uh, 24 bit BMP image. Here, you come here to this place, you can see this image. This is a DD day image. Actually, we can use a file command to share the information of this uh, digital image, digital plan. You can copy the whole name. Come here, paste here. Oops, uh, we use this file command, it's not uh, support here. Or maybe we, we need a single code to code to see Now you see uh, inside this uh, interactive IPython, some commands are supported. For example, that CD and that RM remove, but some other commands are not supported. For example, with this uh, file command, it's not supported. So in this case, you open another terminal. This is the true command line window. Here, inside this true command line window, you can type those command LS. I'm inside another folder. So we need to come to this uh, folder, close this uh, terminal window. Inside this uh, folder, right click, empty space, open in your terminal. Then you type LS, you see the files that are here. You can use this uh, file commander to see this general Montgomery D-Day plan dot JPEG to see its information. You see this file command, it will show what this file it is. It's a JPEG image. And you can see it's a version number for this JPEG standard. You can see the density, segment length, progressive precision, and the size is 400 times 640. Those other parameters, they are used for comparison. So it's uh, out of the scope of this uh, class. So you only need to care about its size. It's a 400 pixel times 640 pixels. Before we can uh, apply a one-time pad cipher, we need to convert it into a 
BMP image with the convert command. Convert this uh, General Montgomery D Day plan dot JPEG dash two dash type two color. So it, this one dash type two color means is a twenty four bit image. Let's uh, still create a general Montgomery D Day plan, but this time the extension. Remember to change it to BMP. Press enter. The conversion is completed. You can see that a BMP file is here. Again, we can use this file command to show its uh, information. BMP. Here now you see this time is a PC bitmap. You can see this uh, BMP file format is designed by Microsoft for you can see this stuff. And it's a size 400 times 640 exactly, right? But now you have something like this, 24, means it's a 24 bit. Each pixel is uh, represented by three bytes. Which uh, those three bytes represent the color, three base color, RGB, red, green, and blue. So now we have this uh, image. We need to uh, extract the header and extract the data with these uh, two commands. So first, let's extract its header. Head dash C fifty four General Montgomery D Day Plan dot BMP. This means a uh, redirection. Redirect the output from this command to a new file. So that new file will create a header, and you will learn this redirection in IDS three seventy two. Currently, you just know how to use it. That's good enough. Save the header. Then we save it. Uh, extract is the data. EMP and save in into the data. Let's just create the data. Okay. Now we have the header and the data. As a uh, task description says, only decrypt, encrypt the data part of this image. So only encrypt decrypt the data part. Now you will come back to your IPython interactive console here. First, we need to read the data, right? Now this time we create an F2 equals open that are data and uh, we want to read it as a binary so it's rb as a flag now the data we just create a data equals f2 dot read so now the data is uh, read and saved into this uh, data variable the data variable there are just some uh, binary data, so we were not interested to show it here. Certainly if you, you are curious, you can type data and show it here. Now we have this uh, data, we want to encrypt this data. First, we need to generate a key. This time we create a key to equals os dot yield random and the length of this data. The key must be the has the uh, same length as the data. So now we generate a, a key tool, random key tool. It has the same length as uh, data, and it, it contains random uh, numbers. Then we can do the encrypted encryption. So let's create an e data 
encrypt their data. Because, because here the read is already done. So the best practice, close it first, f dot close. Now we can do the encryption and save the encrypted data into available quite e data. E data equals one time pad funds dot encrypt. This time I use X or B. Oops, I press tab key, lots of stuff show up. Encrypt X or B. The best way you always uh, use your tab key for auto complete. This way can uh, correct your typo. Here, I use uh, encrypt X or B. Now the first parameter is the print text, the data. The second parameter is the key. This time is key two, right? Okay, now we can encrypt this uh, data into uh, e-data with the key tool. Okay, the encrypted. Now for this e-data, I want to save it into a file. So we need to open a file again, F2 equals open. Just call the file name called e-data. And this time I want to write it as binary, so WB as the flag. Here you, you can see there is no e data. When this command is executed successfully, you will see a e data file, an empty e data file is created here. E data, but it's empty, zero bytes. Okay, now uh, we write that e data into this file. Oops. Write. E data. So this may be a little bit confusing because this file name uh, we use e data and this variable we also use e data. But they are different. This means a variable, this means a file. So give it a good name to distinguish their meanings. For example, you can use a f to represent this e data. F e data means it's a file. Or well, you call it e data dot bin. Okay, now I write this uh, encrypted message into this file e-data. Okay, so many bytes is uh, written into that uh, file. Uh, F2 dot close. Okay, it's uh, closed. Come back here. You can see this uh, data file. This time, you see uh, it's a size, right? Okay, now we have this e-data. We can combine this e-data with the header together to get the encrypted image. So inside this uh, two command terminal window, we type ls to see all the files. We have e-data here, we have a head here with this command. Cat the header and the data together. But we want to cat the header and the encrypted data together to get an encrypted image. This encrypted image is done with the XOR, with the XOR algorithm, right? So let's call it a image XOR dot BMP, which means uh, this image is uh, encrypted, it's data part, is encrypted with uh, the one-time pad cipher with the XOR algorithm, BMP. So the name, you can choose any name, but please make the name as readable as possible and as meaningful as possible. Okay, now I have an image called image xr.bmp. Here you can see this uh, image xr.bmp. When you open it, you can see uh, it's encrypted. You cannot see what's uh, inside here. So this is uh, encryption. 
Now we want to decrypt this one, right? Decrypt this image xr.bmp. We should be able to get the contents. Now let's see how to do it. First, we need to read the its, uh, contents out. So we need a file f 2 open it first. Open, his name is called image xr dot bmp read as binary data. So please uh, use those key, use different name. Otherwise it's really likely you to mess up those keys or data or encrypted data. So give each of them a different name to avoid messing up. So now it's uh, open. This time I uh, quite the, the data is uh, read back. So all data equals f2 dot read. So all data actually contains those encrypted data from this image, from this uh, image xr.bmp. Right, we read from this uh, BMP file. Now we close F2. So it's uh, closed. Now we have this data, we want to decrypt this data. So now let's call it a DD, a D data, means a decrypted data. D data equals, we must use the same algorithm, one time pad fun dot decrypt XRB, the first parameter is all data. The encrypted data I just read from this uh, image. And with the same key we use for encryption. So it's a key two. Now you see I have some trouble here. It says the length should equal key length. Now it's length uh, does not equal. So what's the problem happened? We know this E data has, has the same length as that key two, right? When we encrypt the data, the key two and this E data, they have the same length. But when I write this E data here, write into this image file, when I write it into this image file, its length, uh, then I read it back. After I read it back, its length uh, changed. We can check its length. All data to see what's the length. Here you see the length is this one. This is the previous length. It's a four bytes larger than this one. So why this uh, happened? This is because uh, the BMP image, when they save the pixel data, they need some alignment. So you will always see the data will be, be longer than those da data you write into the BMP image file. They never will be shorter than the data you, you wrote into the image file which means at least they must equal. But usually they will be a little bit larger. Here you can see it's a four bytes larger. So we need to generate. Now, this time we, you may see we have a little bit of trouble, right? We must use the same key to decrypt the image. Otherwise, it, it will not be uh, decrypted. So how could we handle this problem? We cannot generate a new key. We must use uh, the same old key. Now, it says the data, the length must also need to be the same length. How could we solve this problem? Actually, those extra data, we don't need to care about those extra four, byte, four bytes. So we only need so many bytes from this uh, all data. So how could we do that? Uh, we can read it out like this. Uh, 
let's give it a, a new name. Well, actually, we can use a user index or called slicing techniques. For example, if I want to get the first byte from this file, I can use this uh, syntax. So I get only one byte. So if I want to get so many bytes, I can use uh, all, all data with this uh, slicing syntax followed by this lens. Right here, you can see I use one, it just read out one byte. Okay, so we can use this uh, slicing techniques to put the length we need. Seven, six, eight, zero, eight, four. So now it, its length is uh, the same as this key two. You see uh, it's uh, succeeded. The data is decrypted. I get a D, D data. So those are four extra bytes. Just discard them away. We don't care about those four extra bytes. Now we need to write this D data into an image file to see whether we can see its contents. So we need to open a file in binary write mode. Open. Now this time we create D image, which means a decrypted image with xor.bmp. And uh, in write binary write mode, you can see this D, D image XR is not here currently. It's not uh, created yet. So we run this command, it will be created. Here you see it's created here, but it, now it's uh, zero bytes, it's empty. Okay, we want to write this D data into that image. So F2 dot write. Uh, D data, then F2 dot close, and you can see how many bytes is written into that file, right? It's exactly this length. Okay, now it's uh, written into that file. Close it. Come here. We have this uh, decrypted data. Actually, we create image is not right. We should create. Uh, uh, the image XOR data, because this is contains only the data part. It, uh, it didn't contain the head yet. So we can rename it. This is only the data part. So please remember, this is only the data. When we use IPython here, yeah, this is only the data part. It does not contain the head yet. The head yet. So here we need to concatenate with this concatenate command, concatenate the header, because the header we never change it. So we can use this header again and again. Now we concatenate this head with this uh, decrypt uh, data to generate a new image. Cat header with that D image XOR and uh, saved into a new image the image xr dot bmp so like this now come back to see that to check that image we create a d image xr dot bmp right here now you can open it oops why i still didn't get the didn't get the Right image. So you can go back to check uh, whether I made some mistake. Here I decrypt with this uh, key tool. This part I encrypt the data with key tool. So there, are, there should be some uh, mistake uh, happen. We need to find the what is, the, what is the mistake I made here?
actually we can compare this data to see those four extra bytes to see where those four extra bytes. For example, here is the all data, right? The, read, the data I read out and those uh, data I, I saved is the e data. We can compare whether the data we read out is uh, read or not. So we can use e data whether it uh, equals this data we read out from that uh, image file. Copy, paste here. We need to verify us. Here you see it says false. That they are not the same. So we need to uh, find the problem. We can check uh, several bytes to see whether there are some uh, misalignment. E data, for example, we want to check this uh, first 10 bytes. Print out here. Then also check this all data first 10 bytes. First 10 bytes. Here you see uh, the contents are not the, the same. So we need to uh, find out which step I made a mistake. Hello everyone, uh, let's continue our class. In this first demonstration, you can see uh, if I work everything inside the same terminal window, it's very likely to uh, mess them up. In this case, you are suggest to name all those uh, variables and uh, files with a distinguishable, readable, easier to remember file names, uh, variable names, and so on. The second uh, practice, actually we can close this one. For each uh, subtask, you open a new terminal window. I will try the second uh, practice. So I just close this one. You press Ctrl D, it will ask you uh, really want to exit. Yes, close it. And uh, also close this one. So the another good practice is for each subtask, you create a, a subfolder. For example, I can create a new folder. And in this folder, I want to do image uh, XOR, right? Encryption, decryption with one time pair cipher. So you can create another folder called image uh, mod, a txt mod, txt xor. Then four folders, four subfolders correspond to these uh, four subtasks. Then you can copy the image and this uh, code. Can you see, copy it put it inside. This is a good way to make your lab organize, organize them uh, better. Here. So you need to create a four subfolder and put those stuff inside. Then you can work inside this folder to avoid mess up. Actually, I need to copy this one, the JPEG. That JPEG, you can always copy this image, right? Because that image, you can use this one, convert the JPEG into a BMP image. So I need to put it here and delete this one. Okay, now my working environment is clean. So inside this environment, I open a terminal to work with the two commands. And also, I would like to open uh, the terminator and copy its location here. Copy the location, 
and inside this terminator, use the CD change directly, come to this uh, place. You can see here I have only BMP image and this uh, code. So type I Python 3 here. Now go back to your terminal window. You extract the header and uh, data. So we use head dash C 54. Save the header, then save the tail, that you see, plus 55, save the data. So you can uh, have a look about these uh, files. You can see uh, this header is uh, 54, and this uh, data here, you can see the data size is here. If you plus this 54 to this size of the data, you will get exactly uh, the original BMP image, right? Here, four plus four is eight, uh, eight plus five is 13. So you see this uh, extraction is uh, good. Now you have this uh, data and header. So come to your IPython, first read that data. Now this time you can use uh, just use F because you have a separate folder for these four subtasks. Open that uh, data. And in uh, binary mode, RB, then you save the data into a data variable, f.read. Then you do the encryption, let's call it e data equals uh, we didn't import that one time pad cipher yet. Import one time pad funds. Import that OS module. So we have the modules we need. Now, this time uh, we need a, a key. So this key equals OS dot your random. We use the same length as the data. So now the key has the same length as the length of the data to be encrypted. So we have the, now we have the key and the data, we can do the encryption. Now we call it e data equals one time pair funds dot Encrypt X or B so I have a tab here. One time file funds encrypt X or B and with the data and the key. So we get this E data. We can also check the length of this E data. It should equal the length of the key yeah, and the length of the data. Yeah, you see it's true. Oops, I make a mistake. Here we check the E data. Here E data is length is also the same length as the original data in the key. Now we need to save this E data. Right? Save this E data. Actually, I didn't close that file. This is not good. So F dot close. Now we want to open another file to write this E data. So we open another file, put F equals open. Now this time we create a, a file, F E data. And I write as a binary. Then we write the e data the encrypted data right the e data into this file and you can see its size then we close it come back to the terminal window you see that uh, fe data is a is a name called fe data 
So we use a cat, the header, with the FE data to save it as an encrypted image. Let's call it a, a encrypted. I would like to use a short name, but uh, make sure you, you are able to uh, distinguish them. Just call it e-image.bmp. So you can check it. This e-image.bmp, you see uh, it's uh, encrypted. Okay, now we try the decrypt, decryption process. The name is called uh, e-image.bmp. So e-image.bmp, we need to extract is a data and a header. What is the data? We know it's this one, right? We know it's data is FE data. But if you send this one to your friend, your friend need to extract the header and the data from this this file again. So let's uh, just uh, work as the receiver or act as the receiver. So the receiver need to uh, extract the header. Let's see, probably four from that encrypted image and save it as the received header, or header. Certainly this all header is the same as the original header because we didn't do anything on that header. Then need to extract the data. Tell that C every file e image.bmp we save this data, let's call it all data. Receive the data. Actually, this is an encrypted uh, data. So we have the data and the header. So make sure you don't have a typo, otherwise uh, maybe you'll not get the correct uh, result. So we have this all data. Now the receiver need to decrypt this all data, right? So the receiver need to decrypt this all data. So actually you can open a, a new terminal window to act as the receiver. Here, this terminal window act as the sender. So let's just work inside here because we, you need to remember the key need not, must be the same. So in the real world, you, you need to save the key. Save the key in a file and send in a secret way. Here, just like the third question, how do you share the key? with your partner. So usually we need another secret channel. For example, you can send this uh, key with uh, another secret channel, for example, with your smartphone, chat programs, or chat apps or some other secret channel. Or you can, uh, at the beginning, you can sit together to create a key, a really long key. So every time you may just use part of that key. Actually, that one will, will not be a one-time pair cipher. So this is a very uh, serious problem to solve. So here, let's just suppose this one-time uh, pair key, you can share it with the email, consider email as a secret channel. Or use a smartphone apps to share this is uh, a secret key. So this is uh, question, uh, question three. For question one, how to generate a truly random, random key. Here we use uh, this uh, yield random, OS dot yield random. This is pseudo random number. It's not a truly random key. So in the real world, you can throw a, a die or throw a coin to generate truly random number. So this is uh, for question one. You throw a die or throw a a coin to generate those uh, a series of numbers. So you, until you get the same length as the data. Now, how to make sure the one time pad key is used only once? So you used, then you discard this key. Every time you start again, you need to generate a new key. Don't use part of your old key, the whole of your old key. Every time 
It's called one time. Use once, throw it away, generate a new one. So this is for question two. Okay, now let's uh, go back to the decrypt. We know the receiver already extract the data and the head into all head and all data, right? So now the receiver can decrypt that all, all data. First, uh, she needs to read the all data out. So F equals open that all data. Now again, the file name, uh, I didn't make it a good file name, RB. Do it as a binary, then read it into our data equals f dot read, then close it. Okay, now this our data is a read out. Actually, this time we, we can check this our data whether equals our e data, right? This our data is a read out from that uh, encrypted image. So actually we can check this uh, all data, whether it uh, equals that E data. Now you see uh, this time is true. So it's likely the last uh, time when I demonstrated, I make, uh, made some uh, mistake, just messed them up. So we have this uh, all data we can Try decrypt. So let's create a D data. Equals one time pad funds dot decrypt X or B with this uh, all data and the same key. So now it's uh, decrypted. Actually, this time we can compare this D, D data, whether it equals our original data. You can see it's true. Certainly when we, we write out, we should be able to get the decrypted image, right? So now we can use a F equals open a file. Let's call it D image. Uh, let's call it D data. Because it contains only the data part. Write as a binary. Then uh, we write the out f dot write write the d data out d data. Then close it. So it's uh, closed. We can uh, go to our terminal window to combine that all header with this d data to generate a decrypted image d image dot BMP. So we have a decrypted image. When you check it, that a D image, here you see it, right? Now you see it so clearly, is it decrypted successfully. So this is how do you do the lab. I just demonstrated all of this stuff. So there are two good practices you need to keep. The first one, if you work in the same fo folder, with the same terminal window, please uh, name all those uh, variables and files with a meaningful, easy to distinguishable uh, names. Otherwise, the second uh, good practice for those four, actually we have file, subtasks. You can create file, subfolder, just like the second time I do the practice. You use uh, the uh, different uh, subfolder for different, uh, for each uh, subtask. So then you need to copy the code and all the related data into that uh, subfolder. So this is uh, lab one. How do you come, com oh, sorry, this is lab three. Lab three, how do you com complete all these tasks? And uh, how to answer all these questions? Actually, this question, how to generate the, the key? We know in our algorithm, the key is a series of random bytes. Now each byte, we can generate each byte independently. 
for each byte, we know it's a number from zero to 255. So how do you generate a number between zero and 255 randomly? If you throw a coin, the coin every time just give you a face or tail. If you throw a die, you get only one, two, three, four, five, or six. So how do you get a number from zero to two five five? You know each byte is uh, eight bits, right? Eight bits, each bit is zero or one. So from that, you may get the idea how to generate a byte. So you use eight coins, throw them together, and uh, each coin just represent a bit. So you have eight coins, then you have eight bit. You collect them together, you get one byte. If you, uh, your data, for example, this one, I have uh, almost 600, 768.1 kilobytes. So you need to throw so many times to generate a, a truly random key. So this is a really uh, impractical method. And we will learn in the future how to solve this kind of problem. But uh, how do you answer this question currently? You use, you use uh, eight coins. Each time you throw them together to generate one byte, then you need to base on the length of the data to determine how many times you need to throw the, those eight coins to generate this truly random key. Okay, that's it. Any questions?